The two oscillators in the Radical Frequencies Dual Precision VCO are already pre-wired behind the panel to modulate each other. You see there's both linear and exponential FM on both sides, and it's internally wired to either take the sine wave or the sawtooth wave. You can use a different waveform if you want by patching into these jacks on the front panel. And we'll be using that particularly in the next movie when we want to envelope the modulation depth. Now right now I have the two oscillators tuned in unison. You can kind of see from the waveform display here, the green is the alpha and the yellow is the beta. I'm just going to turn on the Moog in drone mode so you can hear what's going on. There's alpha and there's beta. Let's go ahead and stick with beta because we want to hear the results of alpha modulating beta. Now I'm going with the triangle wave because it has a few more harmonics which makes it easier to hear what's going on with modulation. We could use the sine wave, which is very traditional, but as we've already seen, it's not exactly a pure sine wave. It already has additional harmonics. So we won't really be getting a good reproduction of DX7-like modulation with this. We might as well use something with more harmonics. And you'll notice, by the way, how the two oscillators have already lined up perfectly. That's the entrainment I was talking about in the previous movie. Quite often, polyphonic synthesizers, instruments with more than one VCO, and multiple VCOs behind one panel, have a tendency for one waveform to hear what the other one's doing by way of crosstalk. And rather than oscillating purely on its own, it kind of locks into what the other one's doing. You see where they're perfectly in sync. If I go just slightly out of tune, you see we'll break that entrainment as not a problem. But that will happen on occasion. Let's get them at least close. Because for FM, we prefer the waveforms to be somewhat locked together, and entrainment actually helps us. Okay. Let's switch up to using the sine wave from the other oscillator. Linear FM stays in tune as you increase its modulation amount, but it has a milder effect than exponential FM. And let's increase the linear FM amount. And you'll see it goes slightly out of tune. That is an issue I've noticed with the dual precision VCO. When I'm using the sawtooth wave, the tuning stays very accurate. That's because the sawtooth is nicely balanced, it's very symmetrical in positive and negative voltages, therefore it keeps the frequency of the oscillator being modulated centered because it's spending the same time above zero as it is below zero. The sine wave, as we've seen, has a slightly imperfect shape. The top is fatter than the bottom, therefore it's spending more time shifting the frequency of the carrier oscillator up than it is shifting the frequency down. So I'll just go ahead and dial the tuning down a little bit on beta to compensate for the modulating sine wave being stronger on the positive excursions. The effect is pretty mild when the two oscillators are at the same frequency, but FM gets a lot more interesting when you tune the two oscillators differently. For example, I'll take the modulating oscillator down in pitch, these chicken head knobs actually make it pretty easy to tune the oscillators, even though those controls have a very wide range. Now you see how fat the harmonic spectrum is. We have a lot more harmonics going on compared to just the single triangle by itself. Now the linear FM depth on this particular oscillator is a lot deeper than it is on models made before this video was recorded. When I was working on these videos, I felt the linear FM depth wasn't to my taste. It was a bit on the weak side. Well, an advantage of these being hand built and hand soldered with through hole components so I could ask Nicholas at Radical Frequencies, what component is controlling the linear FM depth, and can I change it to get more FM depth? He told me which resistor to change. I tried out a bunch of different values. It came up on this much deeper value, and he's going to use that in future production. So if you have an older dual precision VCO, ask Nicholas what the linear FM modification is to get more FM depth. Anyway, we can keep going down with the modulating oscillator. Create some really lovely fat sounds there. I'll go ahead and take this out of drone mode. Nice patch. Or we can go the other direction and increase the frequency of the modulating oscillator. see where a triangle wave is more wavy now and more interesting to listen to. But in general, I find it more interesting when the modulating oscillator is at a lower pitch than the carrier oscillator. Let's get them back in unison. Now 
There we go. You can see where entrainments lock them together. Now let's play around with the Sawtooth as the modulating waveform. A little bit of detune. And back in sync. And I'm going to patch over to looking at the Sawtooth output from Alpha so we can see exactly what's happening as it's slightly bending the triangle waveform. You'll see when the Sawtooth is below zero, the triangle has a little bit more of an upward slope. It's spending more time below zero itself. And then when the Sawtooth is above zero, it's speeding up the triangle and it's falling faster than it's rising. Again, it's more interesting when I detune these. Let's go to a lower frequency. And you'll hear how we've maintained our root pitch even though I keep retuning the modulating oscillator. Again, we can go back to actually playing the sound. Bring in some of the modulating oscillator. And some of the Moog's oscillator. I love layering FM sounds with normal oscillators. It really makes them fat. Lovely chorusing sound there. Anyway, let's go back to listening to beta. Pull out the linear FM. Turn up the filter. Get the oscillator somewhat back in tune again. Go back to the sine wave. See what that looks like. And then let's start playing around with exponential FM. Exponential FM has a much stronger sound, but the carrier does not maintain pitch as you increase the modulation amount. For example, you see how the harmonic spectrum is really playing games here. And to a large degree, you can do your tuning by changing the exponential FM depth. Once you get good tuning, the sound will indeed remain tonal and track the keyboard. It's the in-between settings that's difficult to play with. And this is where you really need oscillators that track together and track the keyboard very accurately because any detuning becomes really obvious with FM. depth. Now this LED is linked to the output waveform. So as we get slightly detuned and get beat frequencies, you can see the pulsing kind of gives you a hint of when you're out of tune. And now you can really see how the green waveform is modulating the pitch of the yellow waveform, the carrier. When the green waveform is below zero, it's really slowing down the triangle wave. When it's above zero, it's really accelerating that oscillation. Go back to drone mode here. Keep increasing depth. A bit higher. And you go to quite extreme settings. high modulation settings, it is a little harder to keep tracking the tonality across the keyboard. Because we're really torturing the oscillator, we're putting up to the limits of how high it can go. Now there's some of those really classic, very thick exponential FM sounds, and you see how the harmonic spectrum is very interesting, very complex. It's like what you would expect almost out of a wavetable oscillator. a little bit of modification, you can almost get plucked metal string type sounds like a bass guitar or a piano there. Anyway, I'll open the filter back up so you can hear all the harmonics, and we'll put the mother back into drone mode. Go back to something a little bit more reasonable. 
In addition to modulation depth, of course you still have the tuning between the two oscillators. I can go lower on the modulator. interesting for my spectrums and tonalities. And that's just the tame sine wave. Let's look what happens when we use the sawtooth wave to modulate. Again, the tuning changes because exponential FM shifts the pitch downward by a different amount than shifts it upward. Let's retune these. Play with the depth. As we take the modulating oscillator down in pitch, you can really see, particularly high depths, how that sawtooth is bending the pitch of the triangle wave coming out of the carrier, the beta side. something the scope and lock onto here. So exponential FM is definitely something that gives you much more radical sounds, but it's a lot more finicky to use. We'll see that it has actually more limited uses when we start enveloping its depth in the next movie. Now the final thing that was a pleasant surprise for me is that the pulse width modulation doesn't just work when the other oscillator is an LFO, a low frequency oscillator, it works at audible frequencies too, and you get some really great sounds. So let's patch over to the square wave output. There we go. Start increasing the pulse width modulation, being FM'd by the other oscillator. Let's try to get these in tune. Again, I find I get more interesting sounds when the modulating oscillator is lower in pitch than the carrier. In this case, we're just modulating one side of the square wave, the trailing edge of the waveform, as opposed to the entire waveform by doing frequency modulation. And you can start combining these different amounts. You get some really tortured sounds. Man, that's a huge sound for effectively only hearing one oscillator. And of course, you can turn up the modulation on the other side as well to get some cross modulation. That's not quite as crazy as you might think it is, but it does give you another range of sounds. Linear is nowhere near as strong as an effect as exponential. And you don't have to listen to just the carrier. Again, you can bring in and listen to the modulator. Bring in some pulse with modulation here. And then the Moog's oscillator. decay here. Very thick sound. Now that's what you can get just using the internal patching inside the dual precision VCO. 
but you can get another palette of sounds if you vary the depth of one oscillator modulating the other. That's going to require some extra patching, and that's what we're going to do in the next movie.